course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Better than ever.
Welcome back, Ultimate fans. Fifth stream in a row. It's been a grind, but you know what? We've seen some great Ultimate here at the 2023 Canadian Ultimate Champions. Senior face of the tournament. This is the last game you will that will be featured in the tournament. It is the last game of the tournament. Um, we're here with a matchup between Traffic from Vancouver and Sixers from Toronto at the Newton Athletic Park in Surrey, BC. This facility is located in a beautiful place, and we're so privileged to be on the traditional territories of the Semiyamu, Katsi, Kwantlen, Kwikwitlam, Kaykite, and Sawashin First Nations to be here and watch, observe, talk about this game we love. My name is Clayton Howlett. I'm joined here by Anna Hodgson. Anna, this is a great matchup. I'm excited to see it. Uh, yes, we're finally at the finals, and we've got both teams uh, ready to win. Danny Proby will center the disc as uh, Sixers come down in a slough defense. It's a little bit of a zone, but it's very active marks. Catherine Menzies comes down with that. A longtime member of the traffic crew. She'll get around to UVic product at Alicia Brawley. Brawley getting it around to Lynn. Back to Brawley. Raleigh looking for auctions, kind of abandoned. She's working hard for that break shot to Rockliffe, but instead, Crystal DeSantos coming through with the run through D. Sixers with a chance to break. DeSantos puts that up to Lisa Mason. And after the disc works around, traffic gets the first break. Rachel Cook scoring that point. And I'll just say, I said DeSantos twice in a row there. That's because you've got Brittany and Crystal playing for this team. Traffic starting the game off with a break. Yeah, so we saw... Oh, uh, Sixers, excuse me, starting the game off with a break. Yes, okay, I was going to say, I think the Sixers got the break. And uh, and I think they got the break because uh, they're anticipating the swing throw from um, the traffic handlers. And she was able to run through the disc and generate the turn. Well... Uh, it's because she was left with one option, right? Proby came under for Brawley there, and Brawley elected not to go to her immediate look, look breakside. And you knew that pass was going up no matter what. I, I did talk to Matt Doyle before the game, and he said the key to this game, he only gave me one, we didn't have enough time, but he said the key to this game, first open receiver. Didn't see that there on that offense. Yeah. Yeah, we got to see who wants the disc, and we got to have our insurance bailout to make sure we're covered just in case. Yeah, and it was almost like that insurance was looked to a little late. That's a really good point, right? It was there, but not in time. Or maybe traffic is just thinking, no, we have to hit um, that movement that Proby had done right away. No choice. So another defensive point for Sixers here. That pull is going to land at the brick. Kind of a roller, traffic having time to field it, but no problem. Ortega moves that to Jay. Jay was looking for Beau Chemin, but it's on the inside shoulder. So instead, G picks up around to Mason. Elevating is Crystal. Back to Mason. Mason finds Dominguez. Sixers getting on a roll here, seeming to use their legs to win right now. Huang Fu flips that up to Dominguez. Dominguez will float that out to Elisa Mason. And just like that, it's a 2 nothing game. And that energy, Anna, I kind of feel like I know where it's at right now. Yeah, they're feeling good, and they're up by two. So... It's a game where you're hoping for some perfect offense, and so to claw back for traffic will be definitely a goal they want to chip away at early in the game so um, so the game doesn't get too far into it with the Sixers' uh, momentum and spirit uh, staying high the whole time. What's interesting about that Sixers' offense, I think, is that <laughs> it was kind of boring. Now, before anyone gets mad at me for saying that, that is exactly the strategy they wanted. I talked to Coach Carla DeFilippo before the game, and she said our motto with the team has been be boring. They want to play simple, alti. They understand that big plays are a given when Sixers and traffic show up with each other. But she said, we're, we're happy to take the open side under all day. And 
you know, Sixers just did that. So you see that commitment, that timing to that strategy really paying off. Um, so we'll be looking for traffic to get uh, Tenacious on their handlers to shut them down. Proby will field that. Flips that up to Ong. Ong over to Proby. Zone look from Sixers here. Now they clamp down into match defense. Lynn finding Brawley a very late bid by Mason. And Brawley is down. Um, we're getting some help to come out and look out. Or the crowd, thankfully, is quieting down. Um, Coach Matt Doyle strolling over to take a look. <sighs> that's that's tough to see. We don't want to fixate it on too much. I felt like traffic was starting to hit their groove there. Um, Beauchemin takes a time out for traffic. I've never seen this before during a call. I wonder if Beauchemin has something in store spirit-wise for her team that she wants to talk about here. Um, it's actually not necessary to take a timeout. She could call her team in, but maybe... Just to keep it official? Well, yeah, and you know what? I, I actually really like this by Mary of Beauchemin because I'm... You know what? This is a time where you kind of want your team to stay focused. Yeah. Obviously, you want to rally around Brawley right now. She's got um, her coach there. She's got um, some of her teammates there. She has a trainer there taking care of her. So that's the right thing that needs to happen. We do have medical coming. The observers are conferencing. But Beauchemin is saying, all right, ladies, this is really tough to see. We we do have to stay together as a unit. Yep. Um, you know, Alicia's going to get the care that she needs. We have lots of people here for that. Um, and uh, we're going to be able to keep her healthy. But we do have a final to play, and we got to stay in this. Um, so I, uh, you know what, Bosha man really is showing some, uh, great leadership skills there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, coaching this week with juniors, we had, a injury, uh, an unfortunate injury and the Ottawa coach and I brought our players to the opposite end of the field just to protect them from, um, seeing the injury and to give respect to the injured player and the people helping them out. And, uh, in juniors, we were able to play a spirit game, which is um, so important to teach them. And <laughs> and uh, here, it's nice to see both the um, respect and interest in still continuing with the game from the teams in their in their small circles for a chat. Speaking of continuing with the games, um, we did have an instance where this did happen in the juniors tournament, where it did take an injured player. Uh, it didn't take them. The injured player needed some time before they could be moved off the field safely, right? And um, for game clock wise, we, we see uh, observers, the the four of them talking about it. We've got some extra help from our sideline observers um, just to sort this out. The game clock will probably um, move. Um, they'll probably add time to this game because when an injury is this long and the player can't be moved, we don't want to go tick all the way to cap, um, you know, because someone got hurt. That's kind of silly, right? We The safety of players is kind of paramount here. So yep. I expect we'll be able to check in with the observers in a little while about when the cap for this game will come on exactly at what minute of the hour. So when we have that info for you, fans, uh, we'll get that for you. I'm, I'm seeing Brawley over there start to sit up, talk to the trainer. She seemed like she was in a lot of pain earlier. She seems a little bit more stable now. So we like to see that. We saw... Danny Proby over there with her quite concerned and probably was able to go back to the circle. Um, Brawley gets up. Um, Brianne Wager there by her side and Brawley walks off under her own power. You love to see it. Um, traffic did take the time out. The observers are letting them know, hey, actually you took one and you're entitled to more time. Because during the injury, you don't you don't have to charge your time out there. So, um, yeah, we wish her a speedy yeah, just, recovery. And yeah, now this will give traffic in that timeout because that that was midpoint. That didn't happen after a point. They will have a chance to set up an offense here. Um, and uh, you see the Sixers players standing back, waiting to set up on defense. 
So we're at a game of two for the Sixers and zero for traffic. And uh, we'll hopefully see some changes in score uh, with this possession. We've got no wind coming in prior, which is a change from the prior games where we had pretty gusty wind that came from the home side to the away side. So the flags are pretty much feeling still and uh, while there's smoke in the air, it's not totally uh, palpable, but um, we do know the players are just staying safe with taking breaks as they need. Fans, uh, while Sixers take their 20 seconds to set up here, I just want to expand on what Anna said. Um, the smoke is in the air and that's actually why our schedule got truncated. We won't be allowed to play tomorrow with the air quality. So we had to move everything till today. All the time slots are over except for this one now. So this is the showcase match to close out the tournament. The disc is back in. Lynn goes up the line. Lynn looking for options. Probably comes off the front of the stack. Open that time traffic finding that throw. That's the one they were missing earlier. Proby around to Menzies. Menzies. Dumps back to Lynn. Sixers pushing traffic back, but Lynn is able to get it right back up to Menzies. Menzies with the I.O. flick. Effortless to Rockliffe. Jessica Rockliffe with the goal. She's a big name player for this team. Now traffic getting on the board. The score, Sixers 2, traffic 1. Yeah, it was very important for traffic to just play slow and steady frisbee, maybe take a page from the boring book and uh, just punch it in to the end zone so they build their confidence to get in the game. I like that. Take a page from Sixers book in this one, the boring book. But, you know, sometimes that's the best kind of <laughs> ultimate. Um, you know, it's it's smart and it works. And, and traffic this time working it out, um, they really did hit that around cut coming from the front of the stack as a reset, which they were neglecting in those first points. So um, seemed to find their groove there. Uh, you know, both teams energies kind of elevated back up earlier from that energy. So I feel like we're, we're back on track here. Um, what kind of defensive look do you think you want to see? Are you looking for a match defense? Do you want to see something junky? What do you think? Well, the wind's just slightly picking up, so maybe um, as it comes across the field, we'll see some some zone. But uh, they're athletes, so they can play match D and mark up. Sixers bravely field that ball, coming in system heat. Brittany DeSantos, tic tac toe with her handlers. Zhang, back to Brittany. And she'll punch that through a big, wide, open hole to Jury Chuck. She'll dump that. DeSantos blows a tire, so looks for another option. Sixers able to grab that errant pass. Chang. Looks like a call downfield. <laughs> and I got to tell you, I feel like people must be getting pretty sick and tired of me saying, hey, look, it's a vertical and a pick happened. Oh, <laughs> that's new. But we did see earlier defense was a 3-1 zone. DeSantos. Goes back to Zhang. Jury check. Looks off. A covered pass on the open side. Gets it around to DeSantos. DeSantos Chili has a cut, gets up high, but elevating is number 18. Rev Chan bringing that in, and that hold for Sixers brings us to Sixers 3, traffic 1. So uh, I hope my voice sounds a little bit better for you all. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, we saw the Sixers um, punch it in up the line and, and the athletic cutter was able to meet it at a peak and there was no gusts of wind to bobble it up. Some of the earlier games today had uh, second chances and third chances. So here I think both teams are wanting to stick with good first choices and good first 
chances to complete their plays. Boring, right? I mean, we haven't seen any big throws yet. It's interesting that both teams are kind of sticking to the small ball vertical offense. I'm expecting that to open up soon. I mean, it's not as if you're going to look off the big open deep shots when they're there. I wonder if that beat boring will translate into looking off open passes. I don't think so. Both these teams have big throwers. But uh, Sixers showing some athletic dominance right now. Proby will pick up. Flips that to Ong. Ong gets it around to Menzies. Menzies loads up, but there's a poach in the way. Takes her time and throws it anyway. Beauchemin not quite in, but then gets the flip to number 14, Sarah Norton. And traffic responds in kind and quickly. The score, Sixers 3, traffic 2. Yeah, I think traffic would be happy to have a quicker point happen um, as the previous points have had a couple change of possessions and are calls with them. So they're on the scoreboard with two points and uh, and it came from a bit of a mid-range hack. So, um, so you called it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's if it's there, I mean, these players are going to get open. It's interesting that, you know, traffic style was a little different. They said first open receiver, right? And while... Um, Bosha, man, that was a long throw. She was kind of the first look that I saw get open. That was an easy thing to hit. So um, she's probably saying to her, uh, you know, Toronto counterparts, I actually wish I got my toes into the end zone there. That was quite close, but great play by her. Yeah, it's amazing to see her in person. I've watched this uh, traffic team and the Sixers team play over the years, but being from Saskatoon, I haven't really gotten out to watch a bunch of them so i'm having a bit of a fangirl moment just seeing these <laughs> players so close to me it's a long driver an expensive plane ticket <laughs> well um these elite teams tend to throw more than just one defensive look that pull is amazing and comes down with some heat oh. off i believe that contacted rev chan so she's gonna have to take it from the cone Coffin Corner, as traffic likes to call it, so they're going to try and trap them here. But DeSantos able to reach out and then boost it. Trong forced to go up early. Good defensive play by Nicola Parker. If you can make the offense jump early just because you're in the area, you don't need to touch the disc. Parker demonstrating that with that defensive play. Wager gets that around to Ortega. Back to Wager. Jay. Wager did, looking for a pass up the middle, but that's read by Zisim Wang. And Rev Chan will go to pick up. Oh, a cool jab step by Tiffany Zhang there. Gets it off the line. And DeSantos tries the scoop cut, doesn't quite work out. Instead, Chan goes up the line and then flips it to DeSantos coming back. Traffic with, excuse me, Sixers with the hold. The score, 4-2 to two for the Toronto squad. Yeah, it's, it's fun to see the athletes pull from other sports. As you mentioned, she did the a jab step with it. And uh, oftentimes we talk about small ball or small frisbee and... Uh, just borrowing from different sport concepts and applying them to the ultimate Frisbee game. It's a ball. It's just flat. <laughs> flat ball. Um, I love, uh, I heard about a hockey assist and I was told that that is an assist of an assist. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. That's right. Yeah. And hockey, if you make a pass to a player who passes to the goal scorer, you get, you do actually get a point for that. So it is the uh, hockey assist. Um, you know what? Ultimate does not get enough credit for that. You know why? I mean, look at that huck that went to Beauchemin a point ago, right? Huge, great placement. Beauchemin was all alone, half the field, but Beauchemin wasn't in. And then she gets the assist for just a little dish, right? As a handler, I really wish greedily that Ultimate had that hockey assist, but we don't. So don't think points are everything, everybody. Zone look here from Sixers. It'll go over to Proby. Proby, quite a confident handler developing those skills at the University of Victoria. 
and she'll get it back. Madison Ong, a hometown hero of Saskatoon, has got the Frisbee and she's putting it out. Lynn's able to run that down. <gasps> oh, and uh -oh. number three, Jesse Tsang makes the play on that at Danny Proby's expense. This is the second bid we've seen from Sixers that's been athletic, but not necessarily, I want to say, aware yeah. of where traffic's cutters have been. And I can't pull my punches on that one. There doesn't seem to be, on those split-second decisions, a quick look to the side about where it was at. Proby is fine, a little startled. She gets up and she's okay. She is going to take an injury, though. Yeah. Smart thing to do, get herself checked out. Um, yeah, it's never fun to be blindsided, and uh, you want to make sure when you're cutting next time that you feel confident to... Uh, to complete your cuts and you don't see shadows coming and hesitate. Yeah. Matt Doyle calling foul for Proby there after his team teaches him what the signals are. Oh. Um, a yellow card is awarded to Jesse saying, um, I'm not surprised to see that at all. That was dangerous completely on Proby's blind side to get the D. It doesn't matter if you get the disc first. Ultimate players out there, if you listen, that's not a thing. It was a thing. It's no longer a thing. If I don't know when it stopped being a thing, but it isn't. You can get the disc first, but if it's going to result in contact like that, it's a dangerous play. It's a foul against you. No question. So I'm not surprised to see that yellow card. Not trying to be the homer call here. It's just that that's kind of the second one, in my opinion, yeah. that Sixers have done this game. And it's good so, to dial that in yeah. so that um, the, the plays are just remaining athletic. And it's good that uh, some of the rules have evolved in Ultimate as we're on edition 12. 12? Sure. So we've had a, <laughs> just a couple evolutions, and that's important because as we play our game and the strategies evolve, um, the rules need to evolve with them. And uh, so we have the participation of the observers to um, also help with, with that part of it for this game. Catherine Ortega. Big name in Vancouver Ultimate comes on for Danny Proby, so she has the disc. Very intense player gets it done out there. She'll get the around to Boshima. Boshima looking for options. We'll go for the IO to Menzies. Menzies keeps her feet in. No calls. That's a goal. Traffic with the hold. The score now four for Sixers, three for traffic. Yeah, I, I want to say one thing just on Sixers' side here. Energy in a final is a big deal. You do tend to think you have to do a little bit more for your team. You want to put the team on your back. You want to make highlight plays. So I do want to say, well, Sixers have made maybe a few mistakes on those late bids. You can see that they want it, mm -hmm. right? They are putting it out there. It's just been a tad too unsafe, but... You know, they are really trying to make these plays happen. You can't deny that they have the hunger for this game right now. Yeah, they they definitely came out with a bit more appetite and uh, aggression. So we do want to see um, that just funneling through their throws and catches. And, uh, and we'd like to see traffic match that um, higher energy and uh, get, back on, um, get back on pace with... Sixers. So no hard side of the field tonight. Sun's starting to set. Uh, we don't have information for you yet about when the cap for this game um, will come down or when halftime cap will be. We will try and get that for you shortly, but with a few delays to this game, we're not quite sure. Sixers offensive staff, pretty much the same what we've seen so far. Tron gets it underneath. And flips it back around to DeSantos. DeSantos had an open cutter, but a little bit of a stumble leads that disc to hitting the ground. Wager's going to pick up. She'll go to Whitehead. Whitehead speed, very difficult to match for any player out there. Wager. Would we'll like to go to the round to Parker. And Parker Beautiful. finds the break. 
to Sophia Chen. Traffic with their first break of the game. The game is now tied up, but Sixers are still up a break. As we say, they did start the game on defense, but Anna, traffic now back on, back in the right lane. <laughs> Sorry. Stay in your lane? <laughs> ah, not stay in your lane. They just, they've found where they need to be now. Yeah, Getting a break sure. like that, capitalizing on an error, and then running a crisp offense. Uh, that crisp offense is what we've been looking for from traffic, right? Yeah, we know the speed from Terry Whitehead has been long standing um and with her age comes wisdom and so she knows she can create separation as a deep cutter and that's what she was able to successfully do and that gained quite a few yards for traffic and their patience to swing it to the far side of the field was a way for them to punch it in seeing some familiar defensive staff out there for traffic I'm not actually, I didn't get a chance to check with them how they do their lines. I feel like their offensive and defensive line might be rather fluid. Um, some coaches these days electing to put on the players that are, are uh, you know, feeling it. The players that are hot, as they say, the ones that are playing well, the ones that aren't cold, uh, the ones that are on fire and, and their line not necessarily mattering. Um, we see a 3-3-1 three, three, zone here, or a 1-3-3 three, three zone. That's four people around the thrower. Zone set from traffic to Santos deciding to try and shred it. She is Moving up the field with Zhang. Back to DeSantos. DeSantos finds a hole. She airs that out. Hitting the turf is number four, Cindy Trong, to keep that alive. Trong, back to Zhang. Zhang, just great reset cutting right now and working so well with DeSantos. And DeSantos finding the around to Mason. And Mason, happy she caught that. It looked like it might bobble out of her hand, so she held onto that tight. Or perhaps she just really, really, really wanted that catch. Both. <laughs> the score, <laughs> Sixers 5, traffic 4. That hold, um, you know, it, it, Sixers still up that break. So to get back on serve here after half, traffic is going to have to get another after this hold. Yeah, so we saw traffic come down with a bit of a different uh, defense, and they were able to hold it until um, until a little bit past half, and maybe if they were able to transition into match D one throw earlier, um, that mid range throw might have um, uh, might have had a different path, but. Um, we see fifth on the line there, number four, Alicia Brawley back on the field after going down earlier with that uh, extended injury time. Love to see it. You love to see any player coming back from an injury. In our last final, uh, my player of the game, uh, Greenberg from uh, General Strike, had to take two injury subs during that game, but he played great that game, so much effort. And, and when someone gets hurt, especially if it's a big one, to see them come back and play in the game is just so heartening. And a testament to an athlete's grit and tenacity. Proby. Looking for holes as Sixers respond with a zone of their own. She'll go over top to Rockcliffe. Rockcliffe will go back to Proby. Proby has Lynn. Lynn looking for options. Finds Menzies on the outside. Sixers still holding this zone up to Lynn. Brawley's going to go deep. And makes the bid. A great offensive effort from Brawley there, but just out of her reach. Now Sixers with a chance to run it back. Wingy goes to pick it up. We have a call. Brawley, I mean, that injury earlier, and she's she's pretty shaken up after that bid. She's putting it all out there. Beauchemin helping her out. Matt Doyle there to help her off the field. You can tell Brawley really wants to show up for her team here. Yeah, absolutely. They work hard all season, and the timing of the season, whether they're ramping up or ramping down, they want to be there. That's how we do it in Victoria. All right, so Wingy finds the break around right away. It does pop Woo! up, and Lynn ah! with the Callahan. Unbelievable. Just so unlucky with a little gust. Goes over the head of the Sixers receiver. 
and Lynn gets the first Callahan of the game. Strangely, the third Callahan of the day on this showcase field. Boom, oh, man. Shakalaka. So, uh, you know, traffic getting that hold to score 5-5. Five, five. Not exactly how you'd expect to get an offensive hold in Ultimate Frisbee, but traffic will take it. That's awesome. That's bringing them right back in. They celebrated hard, and uh, we are in a 6-5 game. 5-5. Five, five. My mistake. 5-5. Five, five. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, when was the other two Callahans in the open game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had PBHG and Union oh. that came down with the Callahan apiece in their semifinal today, both in the same end zone. So it seems that's Callahan country. Three Callahans in the same end zone in one day. We got Callahan I mean, country and yeah, Coffin Corners. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, yeah. You win that exchange. Nice one. <laughs> All right. Wagers pull, a big one. That's going to float. It will stay in bounds. Give traffic a chance to run that down. Center to Zhang. She'll move that around to Trong. Trong looking for options. She puts it up at a high stall count. Boshima is there. She doesn't need to catch it. She's on D, so that doesn't count as a turnover or as a, as a drop on her end. It's just a turnover. Traffic with the disc now. Ortega. Moving that up to Jay. Jay gets it to the middle and it flips back to Ortega. Chan doing some work in the middle. Gets it again. Sophia Chan from Wager. She'll air that out for Parker. And it's oh. off the hands of Parker. A heartbreaking one if you're traffic. Sixers have a chance here. DeSantos. Asking for dumps. Traffic seemingly to really clamp down on these dump throws. So DeSantos has to air one out. Boshaman again. But she can't make up the ground on Trong, who puts on the speed to make that catch. Innes needs some backup. Zhang, dependable as ever, comes back for her. Chan puts that out to an open jury chuck. Jury chuck slowing it down here, directing traffic. She'll put that up to Zhang. Zhang with the good read over Ortega. And Sixers with the hold. I can see Parker from traffic walking back, head held high, smiling a little bit. You know she wants that one back. Unlucky. But uh, just that small execution error in the red zone, a common thing we see in Ultimate, Anna. Yeah, the mental toughness to make a mistake and to recover from it is most important. So we'll look for the recovery in her game and to shake it off. Um, we're seeing DeSantos from Sixers uh, making offense happen, and we'll see if traffic can shut her down. A tough thing to do, Brittany DeSantos, uh, a member of Team Canada's World Game Team, World Game, World Game, uh, you know what? She was on the World Games team. Did I get it? Yep. All right, got it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, she is an extremely strong player. I've heard, talk to some players that tell me she is the best female matching player in Canada. So really, uh, really nice to have her on your team if you're a Sixers player. Sixers with six points, traffic with five. Um, seeing a familiar uh, defensive line here. Um, Alyssa Mason has been making quite big defensive efforts this game, and her pulls have been big. Another big pull from her. This will be fielded by Proby. She moves that to Ong. And it's Schluff. I believe it's a zone look from uh, Sixers, and they melt into a match defense. Proby's able to get that around to Lynn. Very, very open coming out of the stack. So there was a pick call made by Chan. Maybe it wasn't Chan, but a pick call. No, thank you. It's um, Amanda Hadwin. I'm making that call. So Traffic has a veteran offense on, and they're looking to score with confidence and then come out with a, uh, a hard D-line. Yeah. This is the last game of the day. All the time slots are finished. You might be able to hear the crowd chanting. We do have packed stands right now. Um, 
Everybody's here to watch this. There are no games tomorrow. Everybody's not flying out or going home till tomorrow as they expected. So um, kind of a cool thing to play under the lights here, as they say, in front of the rest of the tournament, which is actually something had it gone according to plans. That's a new feature mm-hmm. of the uh, CUC series. Each year, there will be one final on the Saturday night. It was supposed to be open this year. Next year, it'll be women's. The year after that, it'll be mixed, and it'll just keep that rotation. Proby airs this out for Menzies. Yes. Let's go, Chewy, coming from producer Amy Hodgson. Loving to see her former teammate go deep. Her uh, former name was Catherine Huey, so she's nicknamed Chewy, and she just nails it getting down the field she is known for that speed to get down the field so quick tying this game up the score is six six um proby with a nice jack there she's got an arm that was a flick huck and we've seen a lot of flick hucks turn over but anna just kept that one flat easy first open receiver yeah that's a a big quick point and she had no win to contend with so her frisbee flew beautifully um, out for Chewy to take it down. <laughs> Our uh, colleague Sahab Ansari firing up the home crowd over there. Um, you know, but it's interesting. We've got a big contingent of Ontario players here. We obviously have a big contingent of BC players here. So this crowd is certainly not one-sided. Everybody uh, here getting equal amount of support for this game or two big city centers facing off. Yeah, I saw some alumni players with some of their old swag on. That pull. Fielded by Chan. Flipped in the middle to Zhang. Set play. As Leung just took off. Showing her power in her legs. Trong. Looking for a reset. Find Zhang. Zhang's going to air that out to her. Trong with the upline cut. The score now 7 6. And I have to say, if you ask me to pick an MVP for Sixers right now, it's got to be Tiffany Zhang. There you go. That's how he sees it. That was a beautiful cut and uh, kind of a deja vu. We saw the same play from traffic and the same play from Sixers. So maybe, maybe the Sixers are taking the playbook uh, or a page from the playbook of traffic as well. <laughs> yeah, first open receiver, right? There you go. Um, seeing another big line come out here for traffic. They did this last O-line. They do it again. Brockliff, Froby, Lynn, Beauchemin, Menzies. And out there also Ong, another household name, as you said. And uh, Norton. So a veteran O-line for traffic's offense. Um, now that the score is seven and we haven't talked about the cap yet, don't know what it is, but we're obviously taking half at eight this game right and uh do we have any uh siblings or best friends I, you've noticed i i believe the de santos the santos is the santis um are uh sisters but aside from that i don't know danny proby and uh nicola parker though going way back mm-hmm. fun fact used to live in an rv together it did not go well they got along but i heard it was cold very very cold so uh sorry you two i kind of put that out there anyway so look from sixers ong's able to get that around to proby who gets it up to lynn lynn finds norton boshaman is gone but mason saw it coming she's gonna get underneath it and posts up over boshaman great heads up defense jocelyn lee there to help as well to snuff that hot to Beauchemin. Mar finds the big around looking for Mason. Mason went the other way. She tries to turn on the Jeps, but Rockliffe shuts the door there with her presence. So now traffic is going to have a chance to keep this hold alive there in the red zone. Lynn is going to go around to Ong. Ong getting under net. As it floated a little bit. Menzies off the front of the stack. Looking at Norton. Not quite there. The window shuts as Mason's able to clamp down. Ong. Looking. Sees Beauchemin. Doesn't go for it. Going to run out of time. But she sees something upfield. Finds Lynn who flips it to Beauchemin. Wow. You want to give the hockey assist. 
to number 17, Manasadong, don't you, Anna? Yeah, let's keep track of those. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Next point will take half. Um, Boschman's a key receiver for them, and she's hyped on her on her own playing. And, um, and I've seen her do some amazing athletic plays through the years, so it's, it's quite fun to see her doing this. And she's a Quebec native, but out in BC originally. Yeah, I actually don't know. But I'm just guessing from yeah. <laughs> um, You know, yeah, you're right, a key receiver. And you know what? I was mentioning in that injury timeout earlier, showing a lot of leadership for her team, for the mental game, to bring keep her team's momentum, to keep her team cohesion. And now seeing, um, well, a lot of leadership in her athletic abilities, right? She's getting open for everything. We're talking about her right as she's the tent, so she's going to walk away, not get phased by our praise. Ice cold, oh, focused on the game. And... Uh, you know, next point is going to take half here. Sixers are on O, though, and Sixers did start the game on D, so they are up a break. Um, so, you know, Sixers still with the advantage in this game. If they score this point, they're going to get the organic break and get the disc right back pulled to them. So they definitely want to get this hold to be in a better position. Uh, zone look from traffic. That pass just popped over the top to DeSantos. Easily fielded. She finds Chan. Oh, DeSantos, great jab step to get that back around. She'll put that out, but it's just a little low. DeSantos turning around, having a small word with herself. She'll want that one back. You know it, an uncharacteristic error from her. Wager picks up, but Sixers setting up their own zone. She's taking her time to let her team get ready. She'll pick up. Goes around to Ortega. Ortega's flip a little too spicy. I'm not sure, but I do believe that number 53 jury check got a finger on that one. Chang. To Chan. Trong. To Zhang. Oh, and flips that just into the hands of Lung. Wager trying to make the play on that. It was a close one. We are now at half. Sixers. With eight, traffic with seven. Anna, uh, this has been a wonderful half. Uh, just before I give you the last word here, um, I'll just mention to our fans, this half is going to be a little bit of a longer break. Thanks to our truncated schedule, the medal ceremony for the Open Division is going to take place right now, and I doubt it's going to be shorter than eight minutes. So, um Fans, just leave the stream on. Have that sound on. You'll hear our wonderful voices come back on in a little while after the medal ceremony uh, when we resume in the second half of our final. Um, Anna, you're just like happy to take this in right now. So we'll leave it there. Um, we'll be back with you soon.
Welcome back, Ultimate fans, to the final half of the 2023 Canadian Ultimate Championships. It is the women's final between Sixers from Toronto and traffic from Vancouver. Sixers lead by one, the score 8-7. We had a truncated tournament schedule thanks to some weather events. We are not going to be permitted tomorrow thanks to uh, the air quality. So we have our women's final finishing us up under the sunset here. Um, we are on our great showcase field that has treated us well all week, the BE Apparel and Discraft Showcase Field. BE Apparel providing official clothing for the staff as well as having a swag tent that is now closed down, fans. So if you want to buy anything, you'll have to go to their website and Discraft for supplying the game discs for this tournament. I did say we'd get you that cap information as soon as we had it. This is a soft cap game, and that cap will go on at 742. My name's Clayton Howlett, and I'm here with Anna Hodgson. Anna, it's been a heck of a game so far. Yeah, I hope it uh, stays injury-free, and we are just playing Frisbee, scoring points. To Santos. Centers to Zhang. Side stack look. De Santos taking off deep. Finds Strong underneath. Back to Zhang. Zhang goes around to DeSantos. DeSantos will put that up. It's going to float. But Rave Chan with the superior read on that disc brings our score 9 7. Yeah, she had a great read on the disc and she didn't have to turn once and then turn twice. So oh, yeah. she made just a couple adjusting adjustment steps um, backwards towards the away line. And uh, so that meant she get to keep, she meant to, she get to, she got to keep her eyes on the prize the whole time. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you got there. And you know what? I couldn't have put it better myself. She always had a view of that disc. Makes it simple. Um, we've seen some holds this game. We've seen some breaks this game. It has been more holdy than breaky, if you will. Uh, Sixers did start the game with two massive breaks. And then that was a natural break itself. Um, Sixers finished the last half on defense. And uh, that meant um, they, they also started that half on defense. So they got to start this half on offense. So scoring, going into half, scoring, coming out of half. The point after half. One of the most important points in ultimate, and when you get it on offense, you have the advantage. So, great situation for Sixers. Um, our sun, the sunset, sun going down. We believe we're going to have enough daylight here to get to the end of this final. We do have lights if we are in dire need. Mason is going to pull this. Mason been a defensive force tonight. Her poles also have been crisp, staying in bounds, getting a lot of distance on them. Ong fields that disc, flips it to Lin. Lin finds Beauchemin. Beauchemin fakes that big hot. She'll go around to Daisy Lin. Lin finds Proby. Proby has an arm on her. Fakes the backhand. Lin looking for options. Resets to Menzies. Menzies is going to put that up. A little miscommunication, but I think Ong has the read, and she does. Traffic with the hold. The score, 9-8 to eight for Sixers. And a good adjustment there by Madison Ong to keep that alive. Yeah, she did the same thing the Sixers players did uh, to keep tracking it and have a couple side steps. So... That's perfect. Uh, Madison has moved from some handling positions to to cutting deep, so that's excellent to see her. Am I seeing a traffic light and a traffic cone right now? There are some traffic. I hope you can see that, fans. I'm asking Sarah, producer Sarah Edie to make sure she gets a shot of that group. You see traffic mascots. I have never seen them before. Out in force. Uh, if you don't know Greater Vancouver, um, I mean, it's no 401. Instead, what we have here is no proper highway running through town. So the traffic here is a struggle. <laughs> I don't know if that's how traffic got their name. I've never asked. 
Yeah, checking in with uh, producer producer Amy. She says no. Shakes her head. Seems kind of dismissive of me even making that insinuation. Just a natural. But just just a natural name. Something we like. So traffic now opportunity to break. They need it, but Sixers have been very very good at holding. Barely gotten broken this game. I think only once. But. Uh, you know, Brittany DeSantos with the disc now, who has been a force. Um, traffic coming down with the zone look, but DeSantos, like I was saying, such a force, having no problem just shredding the zone, getting where the defenders aren't to move it around. And then Zhang has been such a pivot player for the Sixers team. Traffic melting into match defense. Young will let that rip. And from the trailing edge, Bram Wager making a huge play over Cindy Trong. Traffic needs this. Sixers know that. They set up in a zone. They're going to try and slow down this momentum. Ortega, hands out saying, me, 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 me. She's there and able to get a reset off with ease. Shoe. Got that to Chan, who moved it around to wager she's looking for options the this zone electing to kind of take its time to get across the field so they can shut down the kind of big through the middle passes the handlers are doing a good job though on traffic here of moving the disc around really using the lateral field see a melt from sixers they are now in match defense Sue, not sure if it's for her. Parker was going, but I think there was a miscue there from traffic. They, No one really knew who that was for. So Tron gets that back. And the disc moves to the middle into DeSanto's hands. She fakes that big flick hock. Had it earlier. Still looking for it. She's going to go for it. Believing in Lung. And that time, Wager once again getting in the way. But Wager knew it was coming. It was kind of telegraphed. Ortega, she's going to air that one out for Sue. Makes a huge grab over, for Chan, excuse me, makes a huge grab over Trong. Fakes hammer. But has number 45. Keenan there to help her out. Big break for traffic. The score, 9-9. Yeah, that was a, a big break, and that was a big lefty backhand that uh, she threw after an excellent catch, meeting a contested throw in the air. And we saw traffic um, accommodating the zone, swinging it back and forth, and they could have scored earlier, um, but the melt uh, to match defense had um, a bit of a leg for the cutters from traffic to get open for them. So it's good that yeah, good they patience through that transition or the turn of possession again, they um, they were able to stick with it. So that early recognition of the uh, of the melt from zone to uh, match D is that's the opportunity space where give goes and yards can happen. So we'll look for traffic to do that. Yeah, clinical offense, right? I mean, that's as a coach, that's what you like to see. Um, Sixers did call the timeout after that point. As uh, you know, it, it certainly feels like traffic has the crowd behind them here now. Um, traffic is finding their groove. That was a break, so that is um, a big deal for traffic, keeping themselves in this game. We are uh, still, still a half hour away from the cap on this game, so uh, lots of time. Still, before one team would, you know, face that deficit, they have to make up. I say that, though, but it's a tie game. So, you know, anyone's game right now, um, those two initial breaks at the start of the game, though, at Theo and I, and Sahab and I were remarking on this earlier, when you get those few breaks early, um, you sometimes, well, a lot of the time, it seems you carry that lead for most, if not all, of the game. It gives you that tiny little advantage, that extra head start, if you will, into the game as a team kind of flubs and doesn't show up for their first two points. So Sixers are currently up one break. 
So they do have the advantage. Traffic coming down in zone defense. It's a rabbit wall where one person chases the mark while the other set a wall in front. But DeSantos and Zhang have had no problem moving the dish through. DeSantos seeds the hole to Mason. Mason elevates quickly so no one can catch up. She looks for options. She sees one. Strong. Showing her speed and athleticism. This game elevates early so her checks have no shot. Great work by the Sixers offense in that zone. The score, Sixers 10, traffic 9. That was a mid-stride uh, catch in the air. So she definitely took off of one foot, but it was less of a jump and more of a running stride to <laughs> get the disc early because she did feel the, the pressure behind her. So Yeah, and Sixers have done a great job of that this game, attacking the discs early. We saw that Huck go up to Trong. I mean, <laughs> it certainly wasn't boring as coach the Filippo had told us that she uh, had suggested she wanted to see but um, you've got some highly skilled players on this Sixers team you have some players that have never been to a final with Sixers let alone at all they did tell me they were in a rebuilding year gotta tell you Anna I'm not seeing it as a rebuild year right now Traf or uh, Sixers looking extremely strong and athletic yeah, if this is their baseline that they're building off of, um, they're certain ahead of a lot of teams. And uh, it's probably due to their junior programming out in um, mm -hmm. Ontario. And so um, that translates into the senior competitive programs as well. Mason's pull. She's been pulling all day. Hasn't lost the juice for it yet as she's able to get that to the brick mark. Lynn to Ong. Ong looks to break right away instead, finds the open side pass to Proby, bounces it back to Ong. Ong sees a hole in where she wants it. This time gets the break, and Beauchemin on there on the outside has a big under to a wide open Menzies in turn to Norton. Norton looking for Proby. Proby's jam cut, not quite there. Good pressure defense. Oh, and off the hands oh. and into the hands of Beauchemin. Um, it looks like number 76, Hodwin, is calling a stall down, and Norton agrees. So Sixers here with a chance to go up by two. And it's important to have that player integrity following the rules. Very much so. Win G flips that to Hadwin. Uh -oh. Hadwin, back over to G. G will go to Dominguez. Dominguez, a big, long under there to Cook. Dominguez sidesteps, goes up the line, makes room for Hadwin coming back. Cook, right back to Hadwin, little give-go action. From the front of the stack comes Crystal DeSantos, puts that out to Mason. Mason's going to put that just out in front of Win G. Traffic with another, not traffic, I'm sorry, Sixers with another goal and a break, escorting their, increasing their lead. I'm losing it here, fifth game of the day. To two points, 11 to nine for Sixers. Sixers played very clean offense um, with their throws and catches there. And when you're initiating, your defender is chasing. So as long as you're always um, one step ahead of them uh, and making your movements, changing directions quickly, um, you'll play offense perfectly and uh, the defense just gets to chase you down. All right, well... So the Sixers team is from oh, Toronto. Toronto. Traffic from Vancouver. Traffic's from Vancouver. Sixers uh, is area code. I think it's four one six. Maybe. Let us know in the chat, y'all. Yes. <laughs> yeah, some of the team histories are interesting because the 
rookie players become the veteran players and uh, as the legacies are passed down from from the alumni or the senior players it's it's always interesting to know the origins of these start of these teams yeah unfortunately i don't know either origin story oh wager's gonna put that out for parker Parker chasing it down, turning on the wheels. Parker doesn't need to lay out a huge grab for her first open receiver. Nicola Parker running that down. Another product of you, Vic, I might add. It's a feather can't, in your hat. Yeah, I can't. Well, I mean, uh, how else am I supposed to, you know, do my thing here? I got to live vicariously through other people because I'm just sitting here in a chair playing Masters these days, so... You know. Yeah, at your age. Uh, at, at my not age. Doing what Terry Whitehead is. <laughs> no, I, is anybody doing what Terry Whitehead nope, is doing? She's an anomaly, <laughs> and uh, and I'd love her secrets or maybe some DNA. Yeah, yeah. Can't beat awesome genetics, but you also see Whitehead train so hard, work so hard to stay at the level she's at. But we're not going to talk about her right now. We're going to tell Parker. Parker. Going real end-to-end uh, -end for her team there to keep it within one. Sixers 11, traffic 10. The lights are coming on as the sun goes down. We are 20 minutes away from our soft cap. We'll, yeah, we'll probably get there as this, this has been a pretty uh, trade-filled half. I don't expect, well, I'm not expecting a team to go on a run with how they've been playing, but you never know. Ultimate can be a game of runs. At the elite level, we often see that it's a game of trade. Sometimes it's small runs. I mean, Sixers are only four points away from the championship. Traffic is only five away. Chan flips out to DeSanto. Zone look from traffic. Moving it quick is Sixers. It goes back to DeSantos. And traffic into their match. Defense looked like they were just throwing the zone to break up the play. Lung goes back to DeSantos. Santos has spent a lot of time looking for the receivers and finding them. It's fascinating to me how she can grab the disc, look downfield, and just find what she wants, and it hits it almost perfectly every, or perfectly almost every time. A mishap once in a while, but always just, you know, locked on target. Trong. To DeSantos, to Mason. Mason, back to DeSantos. Trong just everywhere in the middle of the field for Sixers. Mason runs that in. And that is a hold for Sixers. The score now 12 for Sixers, 10 for traffic. Yeah, you can really see the Sixer handlers have um, probably got some best friendship bracelets. Um, <laughs> maybe they went to Taylor Swift. Who knows? <laughs> but they can read each other and anticipate where each other are and uh it's incredible their field awareness of um of each other so um whether they're swifties or not they are for sure amazing uh teammates well you uh you got that taylor swift language down eh <laughs> why is that i'm a saskatchewan swifty <laughs> love it all right Traffic, familiar O-line personnel out there. Sixers, familiar D-line personnel. We're seeing a lot of the same players go out there. As we saw in our open final today, the benches get particularly shortened at this stage of the game. Sixers are only three points away. Now is the time where your entire team understands this is the do-or-die situation. You are going to play your best players and them only for as long as they can go because everything's on the line here. Proby is going to field that pull, flip that, to Ong, little hop, skip, and a jump. Yep. <laughs> now it gets to Ong seeing this flat zone from Sixers. I've seen this zone popularized this weekend. It's just meant to stop upfield throws, but the lateral movement is fine. And it's when teams try and go through the middle where the defense tries to snack on it. But Rockcliffe is able to put herself where there's a hole. That moves to Mew. Looking for options, none there. Dominguez picks up. Gets it to Hadwin. Over to G. 
Cristo De Santos. Excuse me, that's whoop, a pick call. No, that is G, but there is a pick call probably explaining what had happened. <laughs> G, after taking that in for a minute, says, okay, and she'll uh, make her way back to Proby. Where, and uh, so G will go back to where the infraction occurred while uh, Proby is permitted to catch up to G after she's reached that position. Crystal with some audibles and some eye contact, looking for some options. She'll go around to Sang. Sang to Lung. Long over to Dominguez. Cook. Little give-go action. That floats. A great Ouch. grab. Insinuating contact. Cook don't care. Long. Cook. Over to Dominguez. Doorstep. Territory. Hadwin. We'll dump that back to Dominguez. Dominguez gets that around to G. They'll keep that disc in the middle by moving it back to Dominguez. Cook with a quick flip. And that is in to Hadwin. Traffic not able to stop that end zone look from Sixers. And now Sixers lead 13-10. They are two points away from the championship. Our cap going on in 15 minutes. Obviously, there's nothing more you can say for traffic right now except you need to hold, you need to break. I'm sure we'll see the best players of traffic go out there for these next few points. Yeah, the athletic recovery from the um, Sixers handler, It's sometimes I wonder if these players are primary uh, ultimate Frisbee players or what their previous sports were. Because mm. to me, that looks like gymnastics. And it's like... <laughs> If she can both have a frisbee roll, take a athletic roll through and finish a throw, um, you can see that these athletes have have trained in probably a variety of sports, and so it's no longer maybe the. Um, so the the Saskatchewan judge is giving it a ten. A ten. <laughs> But I recognize a uh, role when I see one. <laughs> Mason's pole. Fielded by Boschman. She'll flip that to Ortega. Ortega has Jay for a free reset. She finds the hole in the zone. Grabbed by Lung. Young. Has Ortega over the top. A little scuba lefty something. That was cool. Bosha man thinks to load up. Finds Parker in the middle. Perhaps not the intended receiver, but Parker quick to get to it just in case. Parker has Jay coming back to help her. Wager. Has Parker coming back. Parker quickly flips that around to Lim. And Lim puts that out. In front of Chan, so traffic still in it with the hold. The score now Sixers 13, traffic 11. Yeah, that was a great quick point for traffic, and they're probably hoping to have some uh, faster points to catch up with the time that we have. So um, they're maybe not looking for any timeouts, and they just want to play a uh, clean, fast Frisbee. So with the score... You know, it's it's thirteen eleven. Um, I'm imagining, you know, the cap is probably not a concern at this point. It is soft. I think we're going to go to a game fifteen, regardless of what happens here. Um, Why? Well, no, that's a dumb thing to say. I'm I think sure we're going to go to a game to fifteen, based on how fast the points have been. Excuse me, but uh, you know, that being said. Um, I think traffic's only way to win this game is if they make sure it doesn't go to 15, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and look for some big throws to some big receivers. So seeing some real speedsters and also some big 
physical, well, players of high stature on the uh, traffic squad out for this point. Definitely some big veterans, athletic defensive players, and speed here coming in for traffic. They do set up that zone. They've usually been holding this for just a few throws to break up the play. And that's exactly what happens as they melt into match defense. DeSantos with the disc. Been a threat every single time with it. Finds Zhang around. The pick call out of the stack. Loving the... Con I, I can't talk enough about how I'm loving the composure of Zhang in this game. She has been pivotal for Sixers. I mean, a lot of people see Brittany DeSantos and say, oh, they got DeSantos, but Zhang has just been... Um, a monster for the Handlers. DeSantos. She'll go around to Trong. Back to DeSantos. Up to Trong. Trong showing her speed. Gets that up to DeSantos. And uh -oh. Sixers just march that in. But I see waving of the hands. I imagine there is a call. It looks like a pick call between Menzies and... And uh, that's number 18 who had the goal, Rev Chan. So she comes back. Goat in the crowd hates the call. <laughs> the crowd wants <laughs> boring. The coach wants boring. The Santos gets that around to Zhang. Zhang floats that out wow. to an extending number 53. Christine Jurychuk, she's not quite in, though, kind of landing on the line. So it is a straddle, if you will, but she just puts that over the top uh -oh. to DeSantos. It's off her hands, hits the ground. DeSantos gives that a frustrated kick. This isn't soccer, folks. <laughs> Rockliff is going to pick up. You see Sixers now setting up in a zone. Flat. Meant to stop that upfield throw, but Rockless sees a hole. She's able to find Norton. Menzies is there for the quick flip. Whitehead takes off. Mason's there late, but she's able to be enough of a threat there to take it away from Rockless. Good heads up defense by Mason. That will go up to Menzies. Oh my gosh. And a break or a hold, excuse me, by traffic. Or no, that's a break by traffic. A huge one at that. Bringing the game to 13-12 with the toss. That was Amelia Keenan with the throw. There we go. Keeping them to a game under 15. And uh, that's exactly what traffic needs to do. And we will hopefully see them out on the line quickly so they can play the remaining nine minutes of, of the game. Well, and Well, don't forget, there is no hard cap. Oh. Right. So I'm just saying, well, I don't think if, you know, Traffic's breaks are the momentum they need. If they let Sixers get within one, get to 14, I think Sixers are going to be able to eventually have one hold where they, you know, just throw a set play and use their speed. And they've just been showcasing their speed this game. Um, it's going to, if you don't want Sixers to be one point away, is my take on this. But, uh, you know, now we're within one. It's 13 12. Oh, we have a little bit of an update. Fascinating. This happened in 2019 in the Goat and Furious final. After an unsportsmanlike contact by Brittany DeSantos, the observers um, awarded her that blue card for kicking the disc. Since that is the third card of the game against Sixers, there's a yardage penalty, meaning this disc won't get pulled. Instead, it's going to be placed at a predetermined marker as you see traffic walking down the field, getting that update from Sandra Hansen, the observer. And I don't actually know exactly where they get it. I'm inclined to think it's in the middle, uh, ver vertically in the middle of their own end zone. But I don't really know. Coach Carla talking to uh, Autumn, our observer, Autumn Toki, about it. So um, we'll, uh, my rural knowledge on this one's been a while. Uh, you've got more than me, and uh, this is interesting to hear that this is how it plays out with um, with three cards. Um, again, the rules have evolved since maybe you've played, and uh, 
that's uh so yeah we're <laughs> i'm rusty and i i've never seen the, the offense punished in this way i've only seen the defense except this penalty the disc is oh man placed in the middle of sixers end zone that's where they'll have to take it i believe it functions like a timeout, they have 10 seconds to set up. Traffic here will have 20 seconds after. So this is a massive turn of events for traffic. This is exactly what happened to GOAT against Furious, what happened to Toronto against Vancouver in 2019. And that gave Vancouver the edge in the game to come out with a win. We are in Vancouver. <laughs> Let's see if Vancouver does. Wow. So an amazing turn of events here. Um. Yeah. We'll see if the crowd knows what's happening. Yeah. DeSantos has the disc, though, and she's been so clean, um, so confident with the disc. So, I mean, not the worst thing in the world to give it to that player when you're locked back. She's able to move that out of the end zone immediately to Lung. Leung, excuse me. She'll go back to DeSantos. Parker on the mark. Getting that wingspan out there, trying to shut down any big huck looks. But DeSantos is going to put it up anyway for the big backhand. Mason has tons of separation. And... Even the bidding defender is not able to get there. And now Mason walks off the field and an emphatic spike by Cindy Trong. Sixers showing us it doesn't matter where the disc starts. Their offense can get it done. The score, 14, traffic 12. Sixers are within one of the championship. Yeah, that was very impressive and a very contested um, catch by the Sixers player, so um, an incredible hack. Uh, this is just amazing ultimate the, to watch. The confidence yep. of DeSantos to put up a bomb like that, the superior physicality of Mason to etch out her check to make that catch, and then the seemingly unbothered flip to Trong for the goal. I mean, that, that O-line was just oozing confidence. There's no way as a defense you feel like you can touch an offense when they're playing with that sort of fire and command. Yeah, they are uh, best friends connecting on the field for sure. So the cap would have been in three and a half minutes. It doesn't matter now. It is game to 15. Like I said, Sixers within one. Sixers can score this on their D. And what's interesting um, they're not, and this happened in our last final, they're not putting out a line to give their O-line a rest and go for the hold. They want to win on defense. They put out a strong D-line. We've seen a, a strong D-line from them all game. It has been getting results, obviously, as they have the lead. Madison Ong fields that. Flips it to Lynn. Finds a hole through the zone to Menzies. Menzies is going to unload to Norton, and Norton is there. That's an easy one for Norton. 14-13. That is a set play from some veteran players. And it started with a beautiful break to uh, Menzies and uh, Sarah, uh, Norton. 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 Sarah? Uh, yeah, and she knew go. And she went early, so she had even more separation than, uh, um, than doing it with a sprint. So we've got a timeout from traffic and they will have a score of 13. Sixers with 14. Um, this timeout, I see, don't see who's talking, but I imagine it's just the good old dig deep talk. You have to break twice to win the game. I mean, the Sixers O-line is feeling themselves right now. We see basically the exact same personnel mason uh yeah, we'll, we'll see offense selling yeah. the tickets and defense winning the game yeah de santos young trong chan so obviously the sixers putting on their best here kristen jury chuck who had that huge grab earlier Zhang, who's just been pivotal in the back. Yeah, they have some excellent receivers out there that can take down the disc. So, I'm, I'm sensing a huck yes. from the Santos here. Yeah. I, I think Sixers have realized that their speed has really taken over in this second half. I mean, 
Trong has just been unstoppable deep. Um, Zhang and DeSantos have those bombs. Mason has been getting open deep. And all the unders are there, too, from all of those players. Yeah, there is a lot of speed out there. So hopefully we have some big arms um, to try and get in the way of the huck. If you're a traffic fan, you want to see that. Wager puts that pull up. Fielded by Rafe Chan. That'll go to DeSantos. Zone look to break up that play, and then traffic melts into match. Chang has Mason. She'll flip that up to DeSantos. Jury checks there for the reset, but everyone trying to get that goal to put it in for the win, so a little too much traffic. Zhang and DeSantos playing together, and Parker saw it coming. So Parker with the huge defensive goal line stand. Wow. The crowd is somewhat excited about this. That is an unsung hero. That stack Wager counts. brings it up. Zone look. Jay is there. She goes over to Wager. Wager taking her time. Is able to find Sue. Sue and Wager doing a little give-go. Sue, a neat step through the zone there. I disagree with this travel, but it's perhaps I because I'm from the West Coast. But uh, I do believe that zone was actually just really tight on the thrower, almost like a double team. And, and Sue was just stepping forward and past them because how close they were. That is my hot take as the West Coast commentator here. But now <gasps> Bo Chaman is going to put that up. <gasps> Chan. Oh, what a defensive play by DeSantos. Getting in the middle of all that to make the big defensive play on that floaty huck. Oh, and Zhang goes Ouch. down. I think it's a cramp. You see that spirit of the game with yeah. Sue there Good. lifting her legs up. The crowd loves to see Sue immediately helping her out. Zhang. Is going to be okay. Cramps are terrible. We did see in our junior tournament, cramps can last a long time. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, everyone's there to help her out. Teammates are around. I mean, it's the code of honor when you get a cramp. If you've ever had one, it's the worst. And you need the person closest to you immediately to give you a hand. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Taking a moment to yeah, let the, it relax. The time won't matter at this point. I mean, we're just going to make sure that uh, Zhang is okay. As our, this game is soft cap, six hours are within one. So however long Zhang needs is appropriate. Just make sure she's okay, gets through this. I see some of the players around here laughing. So I said Zhang is in a, a little bit of agony right now, but nothing permanent. So her teammates are chuckling a little bit as they help her out here. And she is slowly helped up. And they're good. <laughs> and it looks like they're just going to carry her off the field in the reverse crab walk fireman's carry. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. She's down again. Oh, she's crab. down again. I think she's on the sideline, though, so it's okay. Oh, she's going to bum scoot. So it looks like number 55, Win G, comes on for her. Um, Sue giving a signal for her team for what she wants to see. When G picks up. Coming in on zero. G. Oh! Wow, great second effort from Cindy Trong as that went over her head. She airs that out. Oh! And Chan comes down with it. She oh. airs that out to Mason. And Sixers are your women's division champions. A close game. And Sixers just etch out traffic with some speed. And Anna, it was a two-point game. I can't help but go back to the beginning of the game when Sixers went up two breaks and just totally caught traffic off guard. And the game ends with that two-point lead. That could be a story that those players will relate to later, but it was tied at one point. 
Yeah, right. It was a comeback. As perhaps as that. Yeah, perhaps that two point lead was ancient history, but uh, Sixers just really finding that composure, that fire, the combination of those two—a deadly weapon here at the end of the game. Yeah, absolutely. The the players um, that finished the game definitely deserve to be on the field and chasing the big hucks. And we uh, saw just incredibly competitive frisbee from both teams as both teams were in uh, newer building years. Um, it's just incredible that the Sixers from Toronto, Canada uh, are able to come out and perform at, at that level. Um, and we look forward to seeing where the Sixers go. Same with the traffic. And we know both those teams are playing in the American series. And uh, so their season, while we're one stop on their <laughs> tour, yeah. um, I think both teams were really wanting to take home that Canadian medal, which is very unique and uh, beautifully designed. So a silver to traffic and a gold to the Sixers. And I think a bronze to Iris for those wondering. So um, that concludes our tournament viewers. I want to thank you for tuning in, especially today as we went on this uh, marathon of a stream schedule as we had to truncate our tournament due to uh, environmental conditions. Um, it was a heck of a week. We saw some really close games. We saw some dominant teams, but at the end of the day, we just saw some incredible ultimate. So Toronto uh, winning the Open and Women's Division and Vancouver coming home with the mixed. So Toronto coming out on top 2-1 to one this year. Uh, thank you for joining us at the conclusion. And uh, this is Clayton Hallett and Amy Hodgson. Anna signing. Hodgins, and Amy's so my, my bad, not your no sister. Worries. It no worries, ruined no my closing. I'm awful. I'm sorry, Anna. But we thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us for any more Canadian Ultimate Broadcasting in the future. Goodbye now.